Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Ollie, and in this video I am attempting to build a huge scrappy orc city as part of a massive upcoming Kill Team campaign. And he won't be doing it alone. Yes, it is the collab nobody asked for, the collab nobody wanted, and the collab you're getting. It is Broadsword Wargaming versus Zorpazorp in an epic battle of the board builds. Deep in the Ultima Segmentum, on the planet of Fendatha, once an imperial bastion of strength, might, and beauty, it has since been overtaken by the orcs. And now nothing is left but desolation and destruction. I will be telling the story by building a sprawling scrap city. I'll be building some stupidly massive orc-infested skyscrapers that are fully modular, destructible, customizable, and utterly scrap bashed. This is going to be awesome. Okay, let's make a start. We are looking at the Cromlet Games Tabletop Scenics Terrain Range. This is some really good stuff and I used it in a previous video of mine where I built a destroyed city. To put this together, you need a few things. Some clippers, some knives, and some PVA glue. Super glue is optional and does come in handy occasionally, particularly on those small fiddly bits. I have eight of these to do, but I do only end up doing six. And why? Because they take forever to do. The instructions do give you a difficulty scale as well as an estimated time. Whatever that estimated time is, double it. I'm going to have to say I've spent maybe 50 hours assembling these buildings and this, this is not my first rodeo. The instructions are generally pretty clear. Sometimes you have to work out exactly what something means or where it goes, but overall they're decent. As this whole board is for a huge narrative campaign battle report series, I'm happy to put the time in, but these little bits like this just seem unnecessary. Yes, they look good at the end and they are a really nice point, but you spend so long popping out tiny squares. Now, I'm not going to put you through the same torment and misery I went through. I'm going to cut through it so it's all done within 30 seconds. But honestly, this just takes so long. I'm using some high grade PVA here by Geek Gaming. You can, of course, use any PVA you like, but something a bit thicker is definitely better and something stronger as well. Don't go for kids PVA as that's generally already watered down and will just take a long time to set. With everything put together, I can start building this board and creating the narrative I want. Not only do I have a rock stage, I've got a Wargate or Stargate SG War. Um, I don't know. But you get a whole ton of spare bits as well. These are all leftovers from the sprues, not just actual broken sprues, but spare pieces. Great. Another load of hours going through stuff. But as you can see, they're really handy for shoving into the board. You get little grates, little spare spiky bits and orc symbols. We said we need a rock band, so I went shopping. I used my handy old Elegoo Mars with the Mercury X wash and cure station, bought a rock band I found, printed them off, sprayed them green and sent them to Kira Elvenblood to paint for me. So we will see those again later. With the buildings together and assembled, it's time to start painting. And what better way to start than with spray cans? Cheap, inexpensive and easy to use. They are the perfect way to base, seal and protect your MDF buildings. I'm going in with black because I'm going to come back in with different colors over the top. Here you can see the full set. We have a huge landing pad, the rock stage, a DACA bunker and various other buildings you'll see throughout. Hitting the buildings next, I go with some brown all over and then red on some of the girders. I just wanted this to bring some uniformity to, yes, I know that's crazy, an orc table, but I think a splash of color here without using the airbrush and paintbrush is really going to speed the process up and looks quite nice. Enter the airbrush. This is not a necessary tool to put this terrain together and get it painted. You can, of course, use paintbrushes, but I just think it speeds the whole process up. If you're new to airbrushing, do check out my how to airbrush video. As we start bringing this board to life, I'm going to try and limit myself to primary and secondary colors. So greens, blues, reds, yellows, because although it's orky and it's always tempting to go mad and make it look like a big ramshackled scrappy mess, sometimes less is more. Covering over the black here with silver using the airbrush seemed like the best way to do it because it saved me painting individual panels and it gives you that overspill splash rusty kind of look, which I am pretty happy with. I will be weathering and faffing with the buildings later, but for now we can move on to the actual board itself. As I always do my boards, I start with some 5mm ply with 25mm beading around the side. I then fill one side in with foam and I left the other side flat because I wanted it to be flat. Taking the time to plan your board out and decide where things are going to go is so important because 
I want these to be playable and yes I'm using these for kill team but I always tend to build these in twos so having two boards put together for a 1000 point 40k game gives them more versatility. On to the hills I'm using cheap polystyrene the same stuff I filled the board with 25 mil polystyrene. The same stuff you get when you order something from Amazon or wherever your fridge I don't know and it is that cheap bubbly polystyrene. We are going to cover it with modeling compound a little later so the fact it's that cheap bubbly stuff doesn't really matter. Now I'm attempting to build a building into a hillside. I've never done this before. It's something a little bit new for me because as with all of my board builds I try to do something new and learn a new skill every time and if it goes wrong it goes wrong. If it goes right great I can show you guys and we've all learned something together. I'm double stacking the hill because I want it to come up to the first floor. I've set these out I've got the main landing pad as close to the center as possible because I don't want big open spaces. As we move on to attach the rest of the board together, I'm back in with the Geek Gaming Scenics High Grade PVA, which is available from broadswordwargaming.com. If you're an EU customer, we are the place to be. Now splash this all over the table, all over the foam, and then just jam it down there. This of course is not the only way we're gonna hold this on, but it's a good start and it's something to give you a good base to go from. Then we're going in with some cocktail sticks because as we're sculpting this and as we're scraping everything down, we don't want it to move. I had to actually cut to the middle of the board because this is two Kill Team separate boards and it was easier to sculpt it as one. So I've got a very, very hot knife and sort of melted my way down the middle. With things going well here, it's a good time to check in on Lachlan. How are you doing? Really good, dude. I, I definitely don't have just one building half started or anything. Whoops, well, it seems like a time to push on. So we are getting some modeling compound, my favorite product of all. It's a mix of casting plaster and insulation. You just add water and then mix around until it's kind of an egg mayonnaise or tuna mayonnaise kind of texture. Then slap it on, tap it down, rub it in, and you are done. This is ideal for ground forms because not only does it give you a nice smooth soft transition from flat to raised areas, it also protects the foam as it dries really, really solid. Then I'm going to use some rock molds from Woodland Scenics. Just put fine casting plaster with water in. I've done a video, you can check that out. But this also has the same casting plaster as the modeling compound. So you can just push it in and then you can sculpt the compound around the rocks and you end up with a big rocky, sculpty, compoundy, nice hill formation. It has taken me up until this point to decide on the exact finish of the board. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go muddy, deserty or badlands. Ultimately, I think Badlands is the way to go. Mad Max meets Gorkamorka meets a mad orc scrap town. This meant we needed red rocks or something close to red. I got my cheap craft paints, watered them down to a very thin wash and dabbed them all over. I started with the orange color and let this dry before then hitting it with the red color. The issue I had here with the red color was when going over the white, it dried a kind of pink. Normally I would cover this in black to cover the gray finish. So I had to improvise. Bone colored spray from above, a bit like a zenithal seemed to do the job. We ended up with a nice bony deserty colored top, a red rocky base color, and that kind of orange just in between. The building ended up sitting flush into the hill once you use a little bit of modeling compound to fill in the sides. It's make or break time, cover the ground with PVA and then go in with your mega base mix. This is tile grout, sand, sieved soil, Mars Earth base ready and mortar tone to add a little bit more color. Using the big rocks sieved from the soil, drop these down as your first colors. These are the bigger rocks all around the bases of the buildings and the rock faces themselves. I did think about using gray rocks, but I don't think the color would have blended as nicely. Go in with the rest of the mix. This is now very fine, very powdery and in scale. Drop this all over, be heavy handed, throw it all up the rocks, throw it all over the bases and throw it all over the floor. Don't worry too much about stacking it quite high because we are going to hit this with a spray afterwards which will hold it in place. The board is really coming together now and I can see this working for this narrative campaign Lachlan and I have going. Grabbing a bit of sand, just sprinkle this on the top as it'll add a bit of variation and color to the board. Not only will it make the board look more interesting and natural, you also get to practice your best salt bay impression. Sand bay? Ah, Matt Varnish, my dear friend, here we come. Time for you to shine. You can use this to attach grout and other different weathering powders. Spray it on something and it'll remain tacky for a short while, long enough for you to stick some pigment to it. 
I'm going to be using this wall and floor grout, the same stuff I put into the ground cover, because that'll help blend in nicely together. You can just tap this on, use a big brush, a small brush, however you want to do this, and just smother it on. With that done and the whole board nicely weathered, it's on to gluing details down. I've got some barrels, I've got the lights for the rock stage as well. These barrels have been weathered in accordance with the rest of the board, so they should fit in quite nicely. Now remember those orc rockers I sent away to Kira Elvenblood earlier? Well, they are back and they are rocking, quite literally. But with that, we are done. The board is complete. What do you think to this? This is my first time doing a Badlands rusty orc style board looking great for Gorka Morka and I think this is going to look splendid in the narrative campaign Lachlan and I are going to be running. So do keep your eyes peeled for more Kill Team content. If you enjoyed this video, please do make sure you like, share, subscribe and hit the alarm bell for more videos to come. Check out the links below if you wish to support the channel. I do have my own shop now based in the EU selling not only miniatures, but also most of the geek gaming products you've seen in this video. There is also a link to my Patreon where you can keep up to date with what's happening and what is going to come out. Thank you for all your support. And finally, make sure to go and check out Zorpazorp's Orc City build. It is a skyscraping scrap heap of orky goodness. Thanks for watching. Take care.